Hey, welcome back to the workshop. You can change the camera now, Carol, if you want, anytime you like. <laughs> welcome to uh, Guitar Making Channel. Welcome to the Bailey Workshop. Today we're going to be sharpening a chisel. So, if you guys um, have been watching recently, I've been we've been making these guitar makers chisels. Um, we've been selling quite a lot of these little beauties. Um, so yeah, if you've ordered one, then you've either got it or it's on the way, or um, or I'm holding it here. So um, at some point during your guitar making career, you're going to have to sharpen it. So whatever chisel you're using, whether it's ours or one that you've got from a um, car boot sale, like this one, then uh, at some point you're going to get a dull edge and it's not going to be cutting as good as it once was and you're going to need to sharpen it. So today I'm going to show you the methods that I use to sharpen a chisel. Now, um, I'm not going to go into grinding using any kind of um, mechanical grinding wheel or anything like that. Um, in fact, I'm going to suggest that you don't use any kind of grinding wheel. Um, Carol, sorry, we've, this is live by the way, so um, anything could happen and probably will. We've, we've got a visitor turned up, so I'm going to just uh, have, have to carry on as if that didn't happen. Okay, so it's really difficult when, you, when I'm getting distracted. I'll start again. So, we're sharpening chisels. At some point, you're going to need to sharpen your chisel. Carol, please concentrate over here. I'm sorry, it's really difficult when you're distracting like that. So, um, I'm going to show you how to sharpen a chisel and as I was trying to say, you, you can use grinding wheels for this, electrical grinding wheels. Um, I'm going to suggest you don't do that. Now, if you've already got one, gone to that expense of buying one, then you probably already know how to use it. Um, and then go ahead and use it. But I'm going to say, um, for most people, it's probably not a good idea to use uh, a grinding wheel because they go too fast and it, it makes heat your metal up too much. Um, you might have had this experience in the past where you've used a chisel and it's gone blunt really fast. Um, that's probably because it's been ground on a wheel and um, that ruins the hardness. Um, if you're grinding on a wheel and you notice that the metal's gone blue, <clears throat> then you've ruined the temper of the chisel. You've basically, um, you've ruined that chisel and it won't stay sharp for very long. Now you can repair it, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. So basically, um, I'm going to show you a basic sharpening technique for reconditioning an old chisel or a new chisel that's just been worn for a while and needs repairing. Um, I'm not going to show you how to grind or take a really old battered chisel that's got dings and chips out the ends, because then you probably do need to go to a grinding wheel. Um, one thing I'll say about grinding wheels is if you are going to go and buy one, do a little bit of research, make sure you get um, one that's suitable for your purposes. Don't just get a cheap old 30 pound jobby. Um, if you are going to buy a wheel for grinding, then get yourself a slow running grinding wheel and you'll have a lot more success sharpening your chisels. Slow running grinder runs, uh, <clears throat> runs a lot slower and so um, it doesn't heat your tool up as much. So the idea when you're sharpening is not to heat the tool up so too much. So you actually get a better result if you finish it by hand. So even those guys who do use um, sharpening wheels, usually they always finish it by hand. So I'm going to go into the ins and outs of all, how we do that by hand, um, showing you a few different methods. So we've got um, basically a free method and then a little bit more expensive and a little bit more expensive again, but without going completely crazy. So I know you can buy, like there's guys, there's, there's whole channels on this, I'm pretty sure, sharpening. Um, the guys turn it into an art and a science. So I'm not gonna do that today. This is just basic sharpening, okay? So there's a lot you can do before this to recondition an old chisel or even to make a chisel. So for instance, this is one that I'm, I'm making, it's halfway through. 
it's not got its handle yet, but I've rough ground the bevel on it and I've rough ground the, the taper to put the handle on, but it's not been hardened or tempered yet. So um, to grind a, from fresh, then you probably want to get a wheel. Um, but I'm going to assume today that you've already got a chisel, you just need sharpening. So fairly limited scope today, but um, I want to keep it simple because I am at some point going to show you how we make these chisels completely from scratch. Um, but it's quite, quite a long procedure, so um, I'm just starting with a real basic sharpening procedure. I may well refer back to this when I'm making the video on how to make the chisel. So if you're interested in how we make these curved chisels, these are excellent for reaching over the braces when we're carving. Um, uh, when we're carving braces on acoustic guitars, and I use this pretty much for everything. It's pretty much my only chisel that I use. Um, and that's set the cows off again. Was that you, Carol? I hope you guys can hear that, but there's cows in the field and they're quite protective of their young at the moment. They keep kicking off. So uh, on the edited versions of these films, I used to edit all that out. It took some time. <laughs> But quite often I would say something really important and then the cows would all kick off or right in the middle of what I was talking about. So yeah, this is live, so I can't do that. But if you want to get the, the succinct, short and sweet versions of all my videos, they're on the guitar making channel. You need to join, become a, um, what do you call it? Premium. Premium member to get the videos or you can just become a supporter if you like what I'm doing. You want to see me make more free videos like this then become a supporter. Um, so yes, if you like anything that you see in this video, make sure you share, like and subscribe and do all the youtube -y stuff. Um, so the stuff that you can do before the basic sharpening technique, like grinding your bevel, and there's also stuff that you can do after the basic grinding technique, like uh, polishing your bevel. I'm not going to go that far, but I'm going to go kind of uh, one step beyond what I'd call builder's sharp. So I'm going to show you how to get it like your chisel builder's sharp. Builder actually taught me this. And then I'm going to show you just one stage further. And bear in mind that you can go even further than that. So um, for our purposes, for guitar making purposes, this is perfectly good enough. So without further ado, let's get straight on with it. This is the chisel that I'm going to recondition today. Uh, I haven't used it for some time. It's old and beaten up and quite knackered. So you can put the light on, Carol, yeah? Yeah, because I forgot to put it on. We don't really need it, Carol. We're over here. It's fine. <clears throat> so here's my sort of rusty old chisel. Got another visitor, Carol's gone to see who it is. So, um, by the way, if you've got any questions, then uh, leave, a, leave a comment and uh, I'll answer them as soon as I can. What I'm going to do is uh, just start cleaning up this chisel. So I'm going to start, if you could switch the cameras over to here, Carol. So, um, yeah, let's just talk about um, tools then for sharpening chisels. So here I've just got some sticky sandpaper. This is the cheapest way you'll do it, right? Sticky sandpaper, self-adhesive sandpaper. I've just stuck it on a bit of scrap metal that I found. It's pretty flat. So I've made my own sharpening stone. You just have to keep replacing the paper as you go. So that's like a homemade sharpening stone. You could even just use a flat piece of wood, but metal's better. The harder the better. Um, uh, the step up from that would be like a whetstone and my personal would be to use this diamond whetstone that I'll be using later on. So here's a coarse one and a fine one. Um, this one is fantastic just because the size of it. So um, 
I don't normally recommend where to get this stuff from, but I'm going to break my rules in this exception because um, this is such a good sharpening stone. Maybe one day I'll offer it for sale in my shop, but at the moment I'm not trying to sell you one. But I will tell you that this mine came from um, Bill at Tone Tech. So Tone Tech are selling these. They're not cheap, but they are the best thing that I've found. There's a rough and a medium and a fine one, and I've just got the medium one, which I find is perfectly adequate for everything that I need. Um, maybe if I was feeling flush, maybe one day I'll splash out and get the fine, but I believe it's 180 grit, but check that on the website. So that is my diamond coated sharpening stone. Awesome. I've got a fine one as well. These can also be used for leveling frets. So it's a great fret leveling tool as well. Um, and like I say, the main advantage of this one is the sheer size of it. It's even big enough to sharpen planes. So um, the technique I'm going to show you today will also work on plane blades. Will also work on plane blades. <clears throat> so there is one investment to make though. You don't need a sharpening stone, but I would highly recommend it. You can make your own sharpening stone. But here really, this is really the secret to it, in my opinion. I would get one of these. So um, this one is an original. Uh, if we get it on the close-up cam, Carol, I'll get, so they can read the writing maybe. Um, Right, there you go. This is an Eclipse 36. Vintage. <laughs> so this is, I think it's the original one. It's a really old one that I acquired. Can't even tell you where I got it from. But um, somebody gave it to me. I know that you can buy one of these for about £30. But you can also get a cheap knockoff version for a fiver. And I bet they're almost as good. So I've not used one. I'm not going to recommend a brand, but I know I've seen them available from Screwfix. <laughs> okay, I did mention a brand. I've seen them at Screwfix for a fiver. If you go on Amazon or somewhere like that, I'm sure you'll find something similar. So um, quite tricky to make because again, um, it's got a left-handed thread on one side and a right-handed thread on the other. So it clamps like this. And it's got two clamping shoulders, one for chisels in the middle and one for planar blades. So the trick to using this is um, if I just put my thing back in. The trick to using this then is to get your angle right. Now if you look on the side, it actually tells you Plain iron production, inch and a half is 30 degrees and two inches, 25 degrees. And on this side, it has chisel projection. Inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters. So here's your important um, information. It's 30 degrees and 25 degrees, okay? So let me tell you what that is. What that is, is if you notice on this chisel, you can see two facets. So this here facet is the primary facet. And that's 25 degrees. Primary facet, 25 degrees. And then we have a secondary facet or a micro facet, which is 30 degrees. So here's one without the micro facet. So this one hasn't been hardened yet. So we, um, we do the final sharpening after it's been hardened. So this one's just been rough shaped. It's not got its micro facet yet. Um, this one has, has its micro facet, as you can see. So it's 25 degrees and 30 degrees. Now the primary facet doesn't even need to be very smooth. We can just use 80 grit. Um, or 180 grit, 
but the secondary facet we will do with the finest, basically the finest we've got. And basically the finer, the finer you can, um, the finer abrasive you've got, the sharper it'll be and the longer it'll last. But you can go to extreme lengths and you can actually buff it to a mirror finish. But we'll do that in another video. Um, this is, we're going to do it guitar maker sharp. Okay, which is this. And this is, it's pretty sharp. Zero effort to cut that. Beautifully sharp. So Mike Johnson, if you're watching, that's your chisel. Freshly sharpened for you. So, um, yeah. The way we can set this then is we've got this tool here. So we can have an overhead, Carol. That'd be great. So here I've got, um, here I've got a jig that I made. You can see uh, we've got chisel, inch and a quarter, inch and three quarter, gives you your different angles and plane blades. So if I just, um, maybe you can see it on this one, Carol, camera three, is it? I'm going to set it to 30 degrees to do my primary facet. So we're putting it in the jig. I'm going to lift the jig up like that. And then we can move it down. So we just set that distance there. This is just an easy way of doing it instead of using a, a ruler every time. We can just set this exactly down to the inch and a quarter. So that's how that works. And to do the prime, the secondary facet or the micro facet. Sorry, I, I've set it for the secondary facet there, the micro facet, 30 degrees. So we're going to start off with 25 degrees. But before that, this chisel's in quite a state. So what I'm going to do is clean up the back of it first. So I think I'll use my diamond stone. Carol. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, folks. I'll just um, clean up the back of this chisel. So Minimum work on the back of the chisel. We just want to clean it up. So you can see, I don't know if you can see, we'll try and get a decent shot of this. Trying to get it flat. It's almost flat, but there's just a bit on this corner that's not flat. If you're using an ordinary oil whetstone, you'll need to wet this with oil. But we can just use a little bit of water, just a, a few drops of water helps lubricate and keep the um, diamond stone clean. You can wash these diamond stones just with um, soapy water. So the back needs to be perfectly flat Otherwise you won't be able to achieve that razor sharp edge. You may want to wear gloves for this because it can get a bit dirty. It's quite a grubby job whenever you're working with metal. I like to use as much of the stone as possible. So I always move the chisel about so I'm not just wearing one part of the stone out. Now that's looking pretty flat. You can see how the edge looks dull. It's a dull edge. Um, I'll just clean up the sides of the chisel just a little. Not too much. That's all, just so that I can get a sharp edge on there. 
And now we can um, start work on the primary facet. So I'm going to need to get quite rough with it because it's in a bit of a mess. I'm going to show you on the um, on the free um, sharpening stone over here made using sandpaper. So let's get a better shot of that. And I'm going to set the um, chisel up here for the primary facet, 25 degrees there. So that's just a really clever little jig. So basically I've just measured an inch and a quarter and stuck a block on, inch and three quarters stuck a block on. So you can repeatably set it up really fast. It's a clever little trick. Make sure it's sitting flat in the jig. And I'm going to start with 80 grit. So basically you just roll it along and you, there is still an element of skill involved because you don't want to tip it one way or the other. I need to clip that to the bench. Of course, because it is, um, let me show you on this camera, Carol. Because that's quite rough paper, it's cleaned up, cleaning up quite fast. It's not quite there yet. You can see it's about halfway down. Oh, I'm going to keep going until it's almost right to the edge. I could go right to the edge or I could stop just before the edge. doesn't really matter. So this paper gets worn out real fast. Make sure that you use all of it. Beautiful. Okay, so it's almost there. There's still not quite to the edge. So I'm, I'm going to switch to um, uh, I'm going to switch to the, the next grit. So 120 grit and then 240 grit. Already it's starting to look really nice. Obviously it might take a bit longer depending on your chisel. I chose one that I didn't think was going to take ages because obviously we're live. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the fine over here. So this is, in my case, this is 220. Um, this is also available in 320, 400 and finer even. Um, I would say if you're using this method, if you can do it to 400 grit, then that's, that's enough. 400 grit is enough. So we could have done the back of the chisel with this as well, with the fine. I would just use the fine to do the back of the chisel. But um, we're basically, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to touch the back of the chisel again now. We're just going to work on the front. So almost down to that. Let's just give you a close-up of that, Carol. Um, uh, you can see how it's just almost down to the end. I'm going to keep going a little bit more. So that we can put a new micro bevel on. So 
So you can see if you look at your facet, you'll know if you're leaning one way or the other, your facet will be getting bigger on one side, which means you need to lean back on the other side again. But this wheel helps you keep it square. It's not too difficult. Just take a little bit of practice. Um, So, um, so yeah, we just carry on with finer paper now and we're going to switch to the 30 degree for, for the micro bevel. So let's whack it back in and set it to 30 degrees. So at the moment, all we've done is shaped a nice bevel on there, but it's still not very sharp. What I'm going to do now is put that tiny little bevel on the end. And what happens is it makes a little burr on the back. So the trick is to keep going until you can feel a little burr on the back there, on the back of the chisel. Um, maybe you'll be able to see it as well with the close up cam. We'll give it a try. So. This is what um, a builder taught me, is the last four strokes need, should be backwards like this. One. I'll have a look at the end of each stroke. One, two, three, four. I might just even that up a little bit, you can see. Let's have a close up Carol, please. A little bit wider on one side. Uh, there, missed it. There you go. Can you see I've gone wonky? So I need to lean a bit more on the other side. I've lent on this side. I need to lean a bit more on the other side to even it up. And I'm going to draw it backwards. What I'm trying to do is draw up a little burr. It's a bit more even. There we are. Look at that. So you will get it will go sharper if you use the diamond stang, and you, if you use finer um, papers. Well, I haven't got any finer papers than. 240 at the moment so I'm going to switch over to my diamond stone um, and give it a quick tickle so I'll tickle the uh, primary facet first I'm going to switch to the finer diamond stone to finish it off. Give the back a little tickle with the fine stone and then I won't touch it again. The 
it's almost put some mirror finish on it, but not quite. So I'm going to go with the fine paper, uh, sorry, with the fine stone. You could do it all with the medium stone, it's fine. You could do all that whole thing with this. But it just comes out a bit sharper if you'd use a finer stone. So. I need to go until I raise a burr. There we go, now I can start to feel a little burr being raised. Maybe if I exaggerate it, we'll be able to see it on the camera. I'm gonna do, um, the last few strokes just towards me. Trying to raise a burr up. Okay, so I've kind of exaggerated that a little bit. See the secondary facets quite large. But I did that so hopefully you can see it's raising a little burr on the back. And just feel that there okay so what we do is just gently draw it back over the stone like this and let's raise the burr again this way and then if you you can just you can use a strop for this this is what um this is what you'll see people use a strop which is basically a piece of leather covered in um polishing soap but you can use your bench if you just draw it back. Let's see if we can see the burr on the end. Can you see it looks a little bit rough on the end? That's the burr. We can break that off on the bench or as a builder showed me, the builder does it on his jeans like this, like that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do it on, um, on the bench here. So just gently draw it back like that on the front and the back until I don't know if you saw that, but it's, there's little, the little burrs are breaking off. And then you know you've got a sharp chisel. Look at that. And that was rusty and blunt a minute ago. Now look, no effort to cut. So the idea is you make the primary facet first. And then you only have to do a little bit of work to make the secondary facet. Um, and then when your chisel goes blunt, all you have to do is just redo the, the micro facet. You don't need to do the primary facet again um, until you've maybe resharpened it like three or four times. So when this micro facet gets up about halfway or two thirds of the way up the chisel, then I would just make a new primary facet and start again. So there you go. That is how you sharpen a chisel, sharp enough to make guitars. Um, so this, this is the fine stone, which is about a thousand grit, I believe. Um, that's what we're using on our chisels uh, to finish our chisels off. So um, that is the basic sharpening technique, but don't go away because um, we're going to do a we're going to do a member spotlight, Carol. You, you, we've got some questions. Carol's in a grump. Um, Carol, did we make a member spotlight? You said there were loads of. Um, pictures of Jeff and that so we didn't do a member spotlight so no member spotlight this week but what we have decided is that um, on a Saturday we're going to start doing that so I'll do a live demo and then we'll do a member spotlight because I want you guys to see uh, what, what everyone's working on at home so uh, yeah maybe next week we'll do Jeff and Andrew is it his lad 
and we'll do a member spotlight on them too. So is it okay to use Japanese whetstone? EP asks. So um, use whatever you've got. If you need to buy one, I'd recommend a diamond whetstone. There's nothing better than a diamond whetstone nowadays. The old oil stones, um, I'm sure there's kind of diehards who still use them, but for us um, lowly guitar makers, the diamond stone is, uh, has become kind of industry standard just because they're so good and they last so long. Yeah, um, an old sharpening stone with a ridge, um, fix it or bin it. Um, yeah, you can fix it. I think if you get, um, let me just show you. This is an abrasive block that's made for cleaning, like grinding wheels. So when your grinding wheel gets a groove in it, you can use this to straighten it out. So you can get similar or use this to, um, to just to resurface your whetstone. Um, I guess if all else failed, I would probably make up a block with some of this rough 80 grit on. And I bet that would, I bet that would work as well. Um, you'd be a bit wasteful on sandpaper, but I mean, you get yourself a new whetstone, so it's probably worth it. I would try that. Just try some of this because it's really good rough stuff. Um, it might just work to get your sand, uh, get your whetstone flat again. Um, but that's an actual block that's abrasive, that's made for cleaning whetstones, um, cleaning grinding wheels, but I'm sure it would work as well. Um, but yeah, diamond whetstones are the best. Um, wet and dry paper, yeah, that's what you'd use um, for sharpening your chisels. You can make a, um, if you've got an old piece of scrap metal or something, I would use spray fix, like a spray adhesive to stick on your wet and dry sandpaper. So this is good because it's self adhesive, but wet and dry was made to, to cut metal, so it's ideal for sharpening chisels. You just need to have it stuck really firmly on something flat like a piece of metal. And use something like Spray Fix um, adhesive. You just do a light coat on both surfaces, stick it on. You've got yourself a, um, a temporary whetstone. A um, little bit of sprinkle of water on it. Yeah, it works pretty well, but not as good as the diamond whetstones. Um, just want to say thank you to Greyheart for finding us for the first time. He says he's really loving the channel, so that's what we like to hear. Make sure you subscribe and like and all that. So Clint's waiting for his uh, chisel. Um, and yes to planar blades. <laughs> Well, I'll show you how the planar blades fit in the same thing. Here's a planar blade. Same, same thing, but it fits in the outside like this. And again, the, the, um, the degrees are calculated on there. The reason they're different is because of the thickness of the blade affects the angle. So chisels are usually thicker than the planar blades and that, that affects the angle, so hence the different length. But if I stick that there, line it all up, then when I rub it on here, it will give us a 30 degree angle. I've got two questions about that very um, TV says it's working quickly, was the chisel not too bad? Yeah, it was better than I thought, actually. The chisel wasn't in such bad shape, but it definitely needed sharpening. And I can tell you now it's sharp enough. Listen, you can hear how sharp it is. <laughs> I can anyway, listen. <laughs> Carol's laughing over there. I've got two questions about the angle thing. Go on then. So Greyheart says, so the length you use 
makes the degrees of the angle. Is that right? He was a bit confused. Yes, exactly. So this is a, it's an eclipse um, honing guide is what it's called. But if you just Google honing guide, you'll find um, similar. Eclipse, is, these, these are just the guys who invented it. Uh, if we get a close up camera, I'll show you around it. So this is the eclipse honing guide. These guys invented it, I believe, but now there's loads. This one's about 25, 30 pounds. You can still buy them secondhand even. It's perfectly usable as long as it's not broken. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I suppose the bearing might wear out eventually, but I've had this for 20 years and it's fine. I think I've had it 20 years anyway, I couldn't tell you. I've had it a long time. Um, but there are cheaper versions out there as I said, you can buy for about a fiver. Um, how long they last, I wouldn't like to tell you, but I bet it would work perfectly well to sharpen a few chisels. I've got some questions about this. So brilliant, questions, keep them coming. Right, so EP says, is the length protruding to face angle ratio affected when using a curved chisel? Not really, no, it doesn't really. Might it's not that. I don't know if people can hear me. So, they're asking, does it make any difference when I'm using my curved chisel? And the answer is no, not really. The last bit of the chisel is actually straight anyway. The last inch and a half or a couple of inches is straight anyway. Um, I'm sure it does make a slight difference, but it, it's not enough. Um, as you can see, the, the blades come out perfect. You can't see. You can see on the close-up cam. Right, so... Um... What about um, reburring scrapers? So yes, scraper blades. I did consider doing scraper blades on this video, but I thought I would save it for another one. Um, so yeah, we'll cover that in another video. Okay, and then um, TV asked, are there any tips for sharpening gouges? Yeah, gouges is another one. <laughs> gouges, um, here's my gouge. Um, pretty much the same method, but it's a lot more tricky because it's around. So, um, again, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but you just need to get a round honing, um, a round stone and, uh, Well, I do it by hand. I'm not sure if the honing guide would work. I've never used the honing guide for the chisel, but you, I know that you can buy um, round stones and the honing guide, it might just work on it. I've just not tried it. What I tend to do is um, I use a broomstick with wet and dry, tightly wrapped around it, clamped in a vise. And I use that as my um, uh, curved whetstone. I should really invest in a proper one, but it, I, I can seem to be able to get it plain sharp enough. So EP says, how often do your chisels normally need sharpening? Sharpening. At the start of every use, once a month, leave it till it feels blunt. Yeah, when it when it's when it starts to. Do your head in. When it starts to become annoying, then that's the time to sharpen your chisel. We're guitar makers, or personally, I'm a guitar maker. So, um, although I do kind of strangely enjoy it, <laughs> sharpening chisels is not the be all and end all. So I'm not about having the supest, sharpest, mirror finished chisels. I'm not interested in that. Um, as long as it's plenty sharp, um, I don't want to spend more than five or ten minutes sharpening a chisel. As you just saw, that was a pretty bad one for me. It took a while. Um, but, but it's now razor sharp and that will last me for a good while. Um, I wouldn't resharpen it until it starts to become annoying. Uh, Matt's asking... On the plane blade, do you use a back bevel? No. I know there there are 
there is a whole law on sharpening. The black back of my blades is just it's just flat. Most planar blades are just flat on the back. Um, but there is a whole law out there. If you're interested in sharpening and you want to get into it, then you know, go for it. But for our purposes, we just use simple standard stuff, which is flat on the back, 30 degrees. Uh, sorry, 25 degree primary bevel, 30 degree micro bevel. Um, that's perfectly adequate for most of our stuff. Um, it's mostly specialist guys. Think, uh, wood turners use different angles sometimes, and um, there are other specialist guys who use different angles. But for our purposes, the standard is it's perfectly good enough for what we want. We're only guitar makers. It's not that hard. It's not that complicated. It's not rocket science. So keep it simple, stupid. That's what I say. Brilliant. So that, that was some good questions. Um, we don't have a member spotlight this week, so we're going to do that next week. Uh, I was going to do something at the end. So um, how about if I show you how to put a new handle on a chisel? Or file. One more, One more question, and then I'm going to show you how we rehandle a file. These are our rasps. So um, if you buy a rasp from us, then I'm going to show you how we put the handles on. Handle, rasp, two become one in two minutes' time. So what was the last last question on sharpening then? It's not on sharpening. Okay. Not on sharpening. So, all right. Well, I'll just say a final word on sharpening then, before we, before we finish that section, um, is that um, what I've shown you there is a really just a basic technique um, that's plenty good enough for the guitar workshop. But if you want to get into making chisels, then there's more to it, including grinding using machines, um, and also you can take it way further than that. You can take your um, edge to a mirror finish, um, which will last longer, stay sharper longer. So I just wanted to point out that you can do a lot more before and after what I've shown you. But I've just shown you a basic sharpening technique. Um, it should be all you need uh, if you buy a chisel. Like I say, you only really need one good chisel. Or if you're making an acoustic guitar, maybe two. Um, so don't go out and spend a fortune buying whole sets of chisels. Um, you just need one good one or two if you're making an acoustic guitar and every now and again it will need sharpening. Bob's your uncle, you're a guitar maker. If you want to take it further then there are other channels and I am going to be making this, I'm showing you how we make this um, from start to finish at some point in the next couple of months. So keep an eye out, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Um, also, this is our guitar maker's knife that I use. This is great for um, it's great for carving in these bits of the heel and the volute. I also use it as a scraper. I think I demonstrate that on the course, but it's a great little tool. That's called a skew chisel or a violin maker's knife or a guitar maker's knife. In here, it's called a guitar maker's knife. So I'll also be showing you how we make that at some point. Um, great handy little tool. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss all, all that stuff and loads more coming up. So let's put a new handle on this rasp. Oh, last question, and then we'll put the handle on the rasp. Okay, it's, um, it's about templates. This is Simon's channel. He said it's... Um can he ask you about templates for cutting frets? He was looking at doing it by hand. Um, is a cheap razor saw from hobby shops any good? Uh, for cutting frets, not really, no. Um, they're too small. So a razor saw usually cuts about, um, about a 10 thou kerf. So the kerf, if you cut a slot with a saw and then measure the width of that slot, that's what we call the kerf. So let me show you a fret saw. Yeah, see the cow agrees with me. The cows agree. 
that a razor saw is too narrow. This is a fret saw, which cuts a slot about 24 thou thick. So it's about twice as fat as a razor saw. Razor saws are really handy, but, um, but you probably want to get what I would recommend is wherever you buy your fret wire from, buy your fret saw from the same place, then you know it's going to fit, okay? Or vice versa. Wherever you buy your fret saw from, buy your fret wire from the same place and then you know it's going to fit. Um, having said all that, if you've, got, if you've got your micro saw already, then just try it. Um, but I think you'll find it's probably cuts a too narrow a slot. Your frets will be too tight. If your frets are too tight, then um, you might get a few in, and you might even get them all in if you force them in, but it will actually bend your neck backwards as it goes. Imagine forcing something too wide into a slot. Eventually your neck will, will start to back bow. It can become a problem. That's actually used as a repair technique for what we call rubber neck. If your neck's too, too much forward bow, you can actually take the frets out and put um, what we call repair wire, which has got really chunky tangs. And that can actually straighten your neck out and make it a lot stiffer. Anyway, I digress. We've got another question. Well, no, it's just what he was saying. Um, so he said, what, where did you get that? What is that sort of what, what Right, so this one came from um, our pal. I'm telling lies. That one came from Stu Mac. But Tone Tech in the UK sells one that's identical. In fact, that is the one from Tone Tech. I'm... Oh yeah, there it is. So here's the, here's the Hosco one. So Hosco. This came from um, Tone Tech. Yeah, I haven't used it yet. I'm treasuring this one. <laughs> so I'll, I'll use this one when the other one's worn out. But um, they last a long time. A good investment for a guitar maker, if you look in my, I have got a list of what I think is essential tools for building your first guitar. If you sign up, you can sign up for free on the, on the site um, and you, you can get, um, download a load of patterns and you can also get from the site, you can get my essential tools ebook. Or I've made a video on YouTube, Essential Tools for Guitar Making. Um, and it takes you through all the tools. There aren't probably a lot less than you think. Um, but yeah, a fret saw is one of them. I, I would call it an essential tool. It's one of our essential tools on the list. Um, so this one came from Stu Mac. This one came from the UK, from uh, our pal, Tone Tech. Cheers, Bill. So I think we're done then. I just need to find my torch so I can put my handle on. Can't see it anywhere, can you? The giant blowtorch. No? Got it. Here we go. <laughs> right, if you're doing this, folks, this kind of stuff, stop messing about. You need to make sure. <laughs> yeah. You need to make sure. <laughs> you need to make sure that you're safe. Never leave something like this unattended. So this is how we put the handle on a file or a rasp or a chisel, I suppose. This is how we, we handle our stuff. So I'm going to heat this up. You might want to wear gloves for this. I'm not going to wear gloves because I know that um, it doesn't get hot enough. The idea is we need to heat up about a third of this 
tang until it's glowing red. So, um, let's say a third to a half of this needs to be glowing red. My, um, my gas is running out. <laughs> That's how you know it's live, folks. Let me change the... Crikey, O'Reilly. Let me change the gas. Is that full? Try this one. So yeah, any old blowtorch will do for this. I'm using my the biggest one I've got, which is a it's actually a garden. Weed burner. So we're going to heat it up until it's just cherry red on the end. Nice and hot. So um, the trick with this then, folks, is is not to rush. When you're putting the handle on, you don't need to rush. So Carol, um, when I'm putting it on, you'll have to switch to the other camera, the main camera. Yeah. And you'll have to point it to the down to the bench a bit so you'll see what I'm doing. So you don't want it on the face. I want you to concentrate on my, on the handle. I'm gonna be here, right? About there. Okay, so it's nice and hot now, you can see that. Nice and hot. Like I say, you might want to wear gloves for this, but you can see I'm I'm holding it here, it's not that hot yet where I am, it's not even getting warm. Okay, I'm gonna do it now, Carol. Ready? Okay, so the trick is, just don't rush, watch this. I'm gonna do it nice and slowly. Ease it down until it's almost all the way on. Can you see a hammer? Got it. And then we just give it a whack. That last little bit. And there we go. That is solid. That's not coming off. So the trick to that is not to rush. If you whack it all the way on and just squash it straight all the way in, it'll probably just fall off again. The trick is to do it nice and slowly. Ease it on. Smoke pours out of it, as you saw. And then the last bit, just give it a tap and then I can feel the warmth coming through the handle. So we're not going to touch the metal there until it's nice and cool. We'll let that cool down. It's still cool on this end though. And there we are. That's how we re-handle our files and how we put handles on our new files. And rasps and chisels. Brilliant. Right then folks, so I hope you enjoyed that little live stream. Um, Appreciate you watching, especially if you've made it all the way till the end for all the chaos and the mayhem. Thanks to Carol on the master computer over there. <laughs> She's giving me the finger. And uh, yeah, if you found any of that interesting or enjoyable, then make sure you like. And uh, what I want you to do is to, I want you to hone the like button, if you could. Just hone it for me. And uh, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And we'll see you on Wednesday. So we do this, if you've not been here before, we do this every Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. We'll be here, come rain or shine, internet permitting, we'll be here. Uh, 1 p.m., that's our time, Wednesdays and Saturdays. So brilliant. So remember, check twice, cut once, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, folks. <laughs>